reiterate a few things and remind you that preparation is really important when it comes to running whitewater. I can't stress it enough that you know whitewater is not the same as going to a theme park. It definitely puts you at risk and the more knowledge you have, the more likely you are to stay safe. This is a Moravia Willowa 1.5. This is our first boat out. Um, the Moravias are made in Boise, Idaho. They're a raft that I've been running for about 15 years. I'm very fond of them. They're top quality polyurethane and uh, this one here is about 15 feet long and about 7 feet wide. Now if you look at the raft, um, the way that it's put together, uh, you can see that there's different parts. Well, here, we call these thwarts, that's T-H-W-A-R-T, and these are the tubes that go around the outside. So when you sit in a raft, number one, uh, these are self bailing so there's always a little bit of water in the floor. Um, but when you sit in the raft, you really want your, your bum on the tube and your feet underneath the thwart. And then that's going to keep your feet stable and then your butt stable so that you're not going to fall out. We equip you with a, a Type 5 life jacket. So to give you an idea, the life jacket that I have on, the Stolquist Extrax, has about 15 pounds of positive flotation. All of our Type 5 uh, life jackets that we use for our guests are all tested. Uh, we make sure that they're, they're up to snuff. We don't use uh, equipment that's been worn out. And these all have about 25 to 27 pounds of positive flotation. So you really should feel safe in a, a big life jacket like this. Out here on the, the banks of the Skagit, you know, this river we only need a Type 3, but we just go overboard and go ahead and hook you up with a Type 5. So we use these NRS helmets and they're, they're adjustable. So I'll, I'll just kind of run through it with you. So if you open it up, you can see that you've got adjustable strings here. So you can, you can make it smaller or larger just by adjusting the, the strap. Okay, so you can have a guide help you with that or you can do it yourself. If you look on the back of this helmet, it's got a little rotator on it. And you just click that, open and closed. So that can open it up wider. And then if you've got maybe a smaller head, you just you just spin this thing. And that'll that'll close it down on your head. I want to take a look at the the paddle. This is kind of the fun part. At the end of your paddle, there's a, a T grip. You always want to keep your hand on that T grip. And if you let go of your T grip, that's when you pop people in the face and people start getting bloody noses, and that's not fun. So I want to remind you to hang on to the end of your T grip, hold your paddle down below. really think it's a good idea to wear a wetsuit. We rent wetsuits to all of our guests and encourage you that if you do own your own wetsuit to go ahead and bring that. So our wetsuits are industry standard Northwest River Supply. Uh, they're called the Farmer Bill. They're unisex. Uh, we do have several different sizes so when you go to make your reservation just let us know in general height and approximate weight of everybody that's going to be on the trip and if you want to rent some wetsuits from us we'll make sure that we have the right size waiting for you. Putting these on is really simple. You unbuckle the shoulder straps, you go ahead and climb in it. The feet have zippers on them so you can open up those feet, stick your feet through, and then once you're done you can just pull the straps over just like a pair of suspenders. Cotton is not a good idea on the river. As they say, you know, cotton kills. Well that may be dramatic, but nonetheless, try not to wear cotton. You can see that the shirt that I have on is actually Patagonia Kathleen. Now Patagonia makes great stuff, it's a little bit expensive, but that's just an idea. You want Under Armour, something that's polypropylene or polyester, but definitely not cotton. You want to stay to the synthetic fibers or even wool, just something that's going to keep you warm and not going to be too cumbersome when it gets wet. You can see that I'm dressed as a guide, uh, a great strong swimmer, Swiftwater Rescue, so I have this safety belt here. I also have a helmet that I've had for a long time, a whistle that I like to use in case of an emergency or if I need to communicate with one of the other guides. I also always keep a knife on me that's at the ready in case I need to cut a piece of rope or a piece of equipment that is somewhere where it doesn't belong. Every once in a while as you're going down the river something happens, okay? Um, pretty often someone falls out of the raft. Uh, maybe nobody's paying attention, maybe a big wave comes up, or 
something gets us off course and somebody just gets bounced out of the raft. It's not the end of the world. Um, it is a little bit strange. Uh, you're underwater for a little bit, but eventually you pop up. Um, you can see that around the outside edges of this boat, there's a, there's a rope. So you grab onto that rope and we, we pull you back in. Once you're at the river, we're going to go through the specifics of these things, but I just wanted to make you prepared uh, just in general of, of what to expect. And we get a lot of phone calls and it's like, well, how often do people fall in and how often do boats go upside down? And the simple answer is this. You should never go rafting on any whitewater river unless you're prepared to go for a swim and unless you're prepared for that raft to flip upside down. So these little throw bags here, I like these small ones because they're easy to throw and they're pretty light. Okay, there's several ways to do it. But if you just look here, you can see it's just got one of those plastic tabs. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and then I'm going to open the bag. I hold on, I'm right handed, so I hold on to the yellow, the end, and then I grab the other hand with my right hand. So when I go to throw, I throw underhanded. And We're going to do a simulation of how we want you to grab a throw bag and get pulled in when we're doing a rescue on the river. So we're going to talk about what happens if you fall out of a raft. Okay? First rule, you guys, is if you fall out of a boat, you get back to a boat. So both of our boats are bright red, and each of them has a rope around the outside. We call that a chicken line. So if you find yourself having an out-of-boat experience, immediately get back to the boat, grab the chicken line, and have one of your friends pull you in. So commonly on rivers like this, uh, you're taught to do the whitewater swimmer's position. So the river's flowing down this way, you fall out of the raft, you're underwater for a few seconds at least, your head pops up, the, the first instinct that you should have is to keep your feet up. So as you float down river, you want your nose and your toes out of water. So as you float down, you'll actually try to keep your feet up and out of water. And maybe your butt's going to hit rocks a little bit if it's shallow. But remember that no one dies of a butt and trap. So as you float down this way, you can swim to the right, you can swim to the left, and if necessary, you can turn on your belly and aggressively swim towards a raft. But we never at any point want to take our feet and try to stand up in the river. That puts us at a significant risk for what we call a foot and trap. And that's uh, responsible for nearly a quarter of the drownings in the state in, in whitewater situations. If you get separated from your boat and you can't swim back to it, you'll probably hear your guide blowing a whistle. Look to your guide and your guide will be giving you directions to go to the left or to the right. Whenever we say left or right, we're referring to the direction as the river faces down river. So this is always the left side of the river and this is always the right side of the river, this is the left side of the river, and this is the right side of the river. So it's always the side of the river as the river faces going downstream until it hits the ocean. So if a guide ever points you in a direction, that's the way that we want you to swim. So it's fairly simple. We'll blow our whistle. You look to your guide. Your guide will give you a gesture on which way to swim. Once you're in a place where the guide feels you're safe, you might blow the whistle again give you a sign that you're okay. So okay is a question and an answer. So if I ask you guys, are you okay? You'll, you'll come back and say, yes, I'm okay. So let's practice it. Are you okay? I'm okay. Good. So if you're separated from the raft, remember to keep your feet up. And one other thing, especially on the sock here, you know, we're in an undammed river corridor, very geologically dynamic river. And so there's a lot of wood. 
We've got trees, large limbs. We've even got giant roots and stumps that are in the river. These represent serious hazards, and they're, they're definitely life-threatening. So at any point, if you find yourself in the river and you see a piece of wood, whether it be a log or a limb sticking out or a root, you're going to want to stay away from it. Swim aggressively away from the wood. If you come into contact with the wood, you're going to want to try to get up and over it. Even if you can't get up and over the top of it, at least you can hold yourself up out of water. Most of the time, if you try to go underneath a piece of wood, it'll hook you or it could potentially pin you underneath it. So it's always a better idea to go up and over.